Hi everyone, I'm Jacqueline Stewart, coming to you from the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles. Welcome back to 31 Days of Oscar here on TCM. Up next is another classic adventure that earned attention at the Academy Awards. From 1975, it's The Man Who Would Be King. The film was based on a story by Rudyard Kipling and adapted for the screen by Gladys Hill and John Huston, who also directed it. For Huston, this was a passion project. He was a fan of Kipling's work, and he first tried to bring this story to the big screen in the 1950s. Initially, he planned it as a vehicle for Humphrey Bogart and Clark Gable. Then in later years, he considered stars like Peter O'Toole, Richard Burton, Paul Newman, and Robert Redford. Finally, at Paul Newman's suggestion, he landed on Sean Connery and Michael Caine for the two leads. And it's hard to imagine a better team taking on these roles. The story begins in colonial India in the 1800s. Connery and Kane play a pair of brutish, rogue British ex-soldiers out to exploit ostensibly more primitive people. They find exactly what they're looking for in Kafiristan, where Connery is mistaken for a god and crowned king. But how long can they keep the sham going? The movie earned four Oscar nominations, including for Best Adapted Screenplay and for its costumes by the legendary Edith Head. Edith Head's career as a Hollywood costume designer began in the 1920s, but the Academy didn't begin awarding Oscars for costume design until 1948. Head was nominated that first year, and she would become the most nominated costume designer and most nominated woman in Oscars history, with 35 nominations in total between 1948 and 1977. She also holds the record for the most Oscar wins for a costume designer, a total of eight Academy Awards. From 1975, also with Christopher Plummer and Saeed Jaffrey, the man who would be king. John Huston directed and co-wrote The Man Who Would Be King, and his screenplay earned him his 13th Oscar nomination. The film came late in Huston's career. He'd been directing for nearly 35 years, beginning with The Maltese Falcon in 1941. By this point in 1975, Huston's mastery as a filmmaker was unquestionable. Michael Caine said, most directors today don't know what they want, so they shoot everything they can think of. They use the camera like a machine gun. John used it like a sniper. Sean Connery added that Houston gave him one simple direction that unlocked his entire performance and Michael Caine's too. Houston said they should think of their characters as being one man. They could do anything, but only as long as they were working together as a unit. Connery and Caine ran with that advice, improvising their exchanges throughout the film. Coming up, an adventure that won the Oscar for Best Picture in 1935 and earned Oscar nominations for all three of its leading men, Clark Gable, Charles Lawton, and Franchot Tone. <laughs> 